Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my lathe. I'm having a lot of fun here today as you can tell and it is a good day for me. So I have a lot of more things to do on this. Um, today we're going to be working on making the puppet, the live centers, the tool rest and the things that are needed to make this functional. Now a lot of the things that I've done um, are upgrades from Shannon Rogers at the Hand Tool School. So I'll leave a link to that down below. He has an entire semester on turning and a large part of it is making a lathe like this. So that is a really cool place to get a lot more information the general plans, I'm actually going off of Roy Underhill's plans, and I'll leave a link to those down as below as well. And if you haven't seen everything I have up to this point, um, you can go check out the rest of the builds. I will be doing a total build video, uh, taking this from start to finish in one video later. But uh, for right now, let's dive into finishing this. Now, if you know anything about this channel, you know where I'm about to start. A hunk of white oak. Yes, I have this piece sitting around and it was a bit too crunky for some other things, but for this sake it will work perfectly because all it needs to do is provide a bit of thickness to the headstock of the lathe. I'm going to be putting in a tapered live center and I just want this headstock to be a little bit thicker so there isn't any wobble, especially with the hardwood would be far nicer than the pine. So I'm going to mill up a uh, chunk of this board and uh, get it ready to use. One of the important things though is I need a perfectly flat surface on it so that it will seat nicely with the headstock. And so to do that I'm going to be using planes and winding sticks and the winding sticks will tell me if there's any twist in the board and allow it to fit nicely onto the existing lumber. If you don't know how to use winding sticks I do have a video on that and they are a fun little tool that are very quick and easy to make and uh, very very useful. Now the one piece of decoration I'm going to do on this entire lathe is right here. I'm just going to be putting a chamfer on this board. Don't ask me why I decided to do it here. I just did. And I thought it looked good. It was a quick and easy thing to do. I'm not putting a lot of decoration on this because it is kind of a prototype for me. And I'll probably be building something in the future which I'll, I'll want to make pretty. But I'm just going to clamp this in place overnight. Uh, a few C-clamps do the trick and holds it fairly well. Now we can move on to one of my favorite all-time tools. The frame saw. Oh yes, I am so happy with this thing, I just love it. Um, but that being said, I'm going to be working with a 3 inch thick hunk of hard maple. This will become the puppet that uh, holds the, the other live center, um, or the, the tailstock on this. And I'm going to be milling this down, ripping it from end to end, and then cutting in slots so that it will fit in the frame. The frame saw works beautifully on this and just marches through it. Uh, it, is, it is so much fun. It really is. Um, it makes this hard task of cutting through three inches of hard maple something that is very enjoyable and something I was actually looking forward to. Once I get that all cut up, we can fit it into place and I'm very happy with how to fit it. The next thing I need to do is make a wedge to lock in the bottom so it holds it tight against the frame. For this, I'm going to grab a piece of epay that I had sitting around, just a scrap. Um, I had this left over uh, from SV Seeker. I went out to help him um, on his boat, and this is what he is doing some of the decking with. And uh, he had a, a couple buckets of scrap and said I could take a couple pieces. So it was a perfect chance to use one on one of these wedges. So if you haven't seen SV Seeker, definitely go check his videos out. Uh, really, really cool. cool. It is a very hard wood, um, extremely dense. It will dull the planes quickly. Uh, but a lot of fun to use because it, it leaves you with a perfectly glass smooth surface. Very oily, very um, waxy feeling, um, and some cool colors in the sawdust and how it comes out. Just a fun wood to play with. The next thing I can do is put it underneath and then draw in the lines of exactly where the wedge will be. Uh, and then transfer those lines all the way around the tail of the puppet. That will let me know where to cut the mortise um, for this wedge to fit into. And then it's cutting a mortise, just like I did on all the other wedges on the frame. I'll bore out most of it with the brace and bit, and then come in with a chisel and work my way around it. On the angled slide, I just eyeball the angle, uh, looking down the side, I have a line drawn on it, make sure that the chisel is in line with it, and chop it out. Once you've got that mortise, you can slide in the wedge and lock it into place with so just a quick tap or two with the mallet. Uh, it is actually seriously impressive how hard and solid this is locked down. It is, it is one piece and will not move. The next thing I can do is actually install the two live centers. Now these have a tapered bit and they're designed so you can actually 
get, get a reamer that has that specific tape or drive the reamer in. But I didn't want to spend 40 bucks for the reamer, so I decided to step drill it and use a series of auger bits to drill in the holes. On my first attempt, it didn't quite go so well, so I adjusted the depth that I drilled each of them at, and I eventually got a hole that fit very well. And uh, it's just a, a series of a couple different number 12s and then a number 11. And each step gets a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And then when you drive it in, it wedges fairly well. So I'm actually starting with my largest number 12. Uh, it is uh, several thousandths larger than actual 12 sixteenths. And then I'll go to a small 12 sixteenths. This is several thousandths it's smaller than actual 12 sixteenths. And then I'll go into an 11 sixteenths. Uh, the number 11 bit and this one I will bore all the way through. You can see how the middle one I had a, a flag on there to tell me how far in to put it and that actually evened out the taper from one end to the other. Once then we can put the live center in I can tap it into place and actually transfer, transfer the location of the live center from the puppet to the headstock. And uh, yeah now I have a hole and a location where I can drill that taper all over again and continue through the bits until I get that fit in there. You can see I'm using that ring trick I talked about in a previous video. Just allows you to put in a perfectly level hole. Now we got a live center on both sides. I can just tap it in place and we can actually test out how close these are. And you really want these live centers to points to be really, really tight together. And this was kind of the moment of truth, how accurate was I in everything. And I was, <laughs> I was actually very impressed. They, they came out really close, um, uh, almost machinist close. They were, I, I was very, very pleased with it. So yeah, take your time and you'll, you'll be happy with your outcome. The last thing we need to build for this is a tool rest. And I have this piece of brass that will be the top edge that the tools will slide on. And this hunk of uh, five quarter white oak will be the main body of it. So I can lay out the lines um, judging off of that piece of brass I have to make it the right size. And then I'll take it over to the, uh, the saw bench and uh, chop it out. And here I am actually cross cutting with a rip saw. I didn't want to go all the way back over to my saw till and get a cross cut saw. So I just cross cut with a rip saw. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It actually works fairly well. The next thing I want to do is put a very heavy chamfer all the way along the front edge for that brass piece to fit onto. Um, putting it at an angle allows the tools to go at an angle to the work. Uh, before going too far into it, I needed to go back and put a chamfer on all of the edges so that when I'm chamfering the main edge, I'm not going to be blowing out the end because this is end grain that I am cutting through. And it, it goes fairly quickly. Um, I didn't use a low angle, I just used my normal, I think I used a four and a half on it, and it worked fairly well. Marched down through it, and I really like the surface of that 45 degree end grain. Um, I'm gonna have to use that somewhere. It's just an enjoyable surface. And there you can see how that piece will fit in. The next thing I do is to drill through it so I can actually put some screws into this to hold it in place. And here I get to use one of my other favorite tools. Uh, the beam drill, the post drill is a enjoyable, enjoyable tool to use, and it is designed for drilling through metal. Uh, a lot of fun to work with. I did a rest restoration on this a while ago, and you can see the video on that if you want to, but not a necessary tool, but definitely a fun one. Then I can bring it back over and countersink in where the heads of the screws will be so that they sit nice and flush. Uh, a good countersink bit is a very hard thing to find. And when you can find it, hold on to it and mark it and don't ever lose it. <laughs> but then I can use my patented Jared Hildebrandt all. And uh, Jared Hildebrandt's another good channel to go check out. Definitely take a look at that. But he gave me this all oof, probably about a year and a half ago. And I love using it every time I think about him. Then I can put in some screws, attach this thing into place, and uh, we're ready to go on to making the supports for it. For the supports, I have another piece of white oak. Uh, about three inches wide and I'm going to be cutting most of the body out of this uh, except for the riser that will go in between the two frames that is a hunk of uh, box elder that I have and that will fit in between the two rail frames um, so that it separates the nut on the bottom and the tool on the, the tool rest on the top. I can use the tool rest to draw marks onto this support beam and I want to create a dado in this for the tool rest to fit into. So I can cut down the shoulders on either side, remove most of the waste with a chisel, and then come in with a router plane and clean it up. I do have several videos on making a dado if you want to see more detail on that. It is a, a fun little process to do, and surprisingly fast. 
Then once it's cut out, you can see how well it fits down in there. To hold this in place, I'm not going to use any glues. I'm just going to be uh, running it in with a screw, and uh, this will allow me to change it out if anything, if I want to, you know, fix anything, change anything, or you know, replace it. Um, I can just switch it out with screws and not have a uh, not have to worry about the glue. The next thing I need to do is work on the riser block and uh, put a hole through that and the nut board, which you can see beside, that will go on the bottom of the frame. And then a little bolt will go through all these pieces and up into this uh, um, support beam. And on this beam, I actually want to create a long slot all the way through that the bolt can slide so I can move the tool rest in and out. So I'm going to make a whole series of holes, um, half inch, so that my half inch bolt will be able to slide in and out through this whole slot. And once I get those all bored out, I can come in with a chisel and chop out all the waste. This is actually a very, very fun step. Um, very quick and easy to chop out. And uh, voila, you've got a slot that the bolt can fit in and slot from one end to the other. Now the next thing is to actually assemble this thing. And the bolt goes through the nut on the bottom, through the riser, and then into that rail. And here I have a handle nut. Uh, this is another tip from Shannon Rogers. Really quick little um, adjustment mechanism so that I can fit it into place and then easily slide it side to side as well as pull the tool rest in and out and get it close to the work. And now it is time for the fun. I'm going to wrap the cord around it so that the string comes and goes on my side. I can put the centers into the two center marks I made, tap the sucker in place, and uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all you need to do to, to start turning. Then just start stepping on the treadle. I spent uh, probably about an hour, hour and a half just playing with the tre treadle yesterday uh, before I got the tool rest in place. And it was one of those fun things just to learn how does the treadle work, how does it feel, how do you switch between feet, uh, how do you how do you use it? Because it's a, it's kind of a whole new skill to learn with balancing your arms and your leg and you're thinking about your whole body and how it's working and it's just a lot of fun, a, a serious amount of fun to figure out and to play with. And I'm going to be playing with this a lot more in the future. So there you have it, a functioning lathe. Now I have a few other additions and extra things that I'm going to be doing to this. Um, I'm going to be making a uh, better treadle as that one's a bit of a pain. But for right now it's functioning and I can make some things and so I'm starting to work on Christmas presents. And I'll be doing quite a few other videos on this throughout the build and working things along. So yeah, I'm having a lot of fun here as, as you can tell. This is an absolute blast and uh, I've, turned on a, uh, I've turned on a reciprocal lathe uh, once before just as one time and had a blast doing it. And really that was one of the big reasons why I wanted to build this and not a flywheel oil lathe is it's just a lot of fun. Not to mention it's a little faster just to get up and going. And a simple thing like this, I could pick this up and take it around and travel with it. So I am looking forward to using this a lot more in the future. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys really are the reason why I can do this and uh, put out videos like this in the future. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or help out with that, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.